so inspired about creation today. So I thought I'd do a segment on creation and that curious question of, are you the one to bring something into this world? Are you the one to actualize it? So <laughs> you might uh, have no idea what I'm talking about, or you might be like me and you have 10,000 ideas and creations that come into your universe every single day. I would not have enough days this lifetime if I were to ever actualize every single idea that came into my universe. So here's a few um, tips and tricks that I use to kind of get a sense of if I'm the one to bring this into the world so that I'm not really um, putting my energy into things that aren't going to work out that I don't actually want to actualize that aren't really for me. So the first question I'm going to invite you to ask yourself is, is this something that matches what you would like to create or have in the world or um, change in the world? Okay. So all these ideas are buzzing. When comes up to you, does it even actually match like your big vision? You know, if it doesn't, then you're probably just picking up on someone else's universe, someone else's desires, something going on for someone else. And then you can just like, you know, kiss that creation goodbye and let it float off to that other person's universe. But I know for me, if I'm really going to like pour myself into something, it has to resonate with the world I'd like to create. So um, if something came up and I'm like, oh, that's a really great idea. Like, oh my God, the business ideas I've had. I'm like, that's a brilliant idea that would probably generate a lot of money. And then I'm like, does this actually match like the world that I'd like to have? Like, would I be willing to do whatever it takes to bring this into the world? If I get like, not really, it's just not for me. It's not mine. It's okay. Just contribute to that creation. Let it go find someone else. (laughs) So the next thing. Okay. So now let's, we're going down the little thread, right? So you got, yes, this matches. This is it. I would love to have this in the world. I'd love to be part of this in the world. Um, is this something that would expand your life if you were a creator source for it? And I don't mean the only creator source, but I mean, one of the like creative energies that are really moving something forward, would it actually expand your life or not? Now, this doesn't mean now that you're like all attached to this idea. Um, it doesn't mean that you now are no longer a part of it. But if you're getting a no, actually, you know what? It does not, I don't get it would expand my life. It would add a lot of stress. It would be really difficult. I would, oh my gosh, I'd be like up late at night just trying to figure all this stuff out. And you start to feel like this massive contraction strain to occur. Then then it's probably either not for you or not at this time for you to be the creative source or something for this particular thing. Because the gift of being the creative source is that it will actually enliven and energize you when it matches. Yeah. Okay. So if you're kind of getting, if you ask that question, like, is my life going to get expanded to be the creative source for this idea, this this new possibility in the world. If you're getting a no, it's probably not for you. If you're getting a yes, oh my goodness, like this is kind of terrifying. Um, I really get like, it's going to expand my whole universe. That's a pretty clear indication that this is something that is, that you could choose to have come through you, that you could be a catalyst a facilitator for actualizing in the world. So then the last question that you can ask is, does this possibility, so for, if you're like a yes on the first two, then you can go ahead and already acknowledge that this, this particular idea, this creation, it's here, it, it saw you, it knew that you could actualize it, it's asking you to actualize it, and now you get to choose yes or no. Even if it matches, you can still, I mean, you always have choice. Even if you're like, oh my God, this looks bad in my life and totally matches. You could still not do it, right? We all have excuses that we use to decide why we can't do something. And you can just not choose it with an excuse or without an excuse. 
But if you're a yes, okay, you've got yes, you've got yes, you've got yes. Now I would recommend asking the question, does this creation require others, including me, to facilitate its actualization? Facilitate its actualization. So facilitate is to actually make something easier and usually faster. Okay, so you're acknowledging like, okay, I'm here, I'm going to actualize this in the world, but you might actually get the hit that it requires more people. It could even just be one person. It could be an energy. It could be uh, the earth. It could be a multitude of things. Part of why I wanted to include this piece in the video is that one, you, you never have to do anything alone. Sometimes it's easier to do something as like you as the main person. <laughs> I've experienced that. And sometimes if you're getting this a little bit of a push pull, or then you might be aware that this particular creation is asking for the involvement of multiple people to facilitate its actualization. Now, if you include that energy, and if you're getting this yes and you include that, then it will probably have an even more expansive sense to it. And then the ease will show up with that. If you have a million creations in your head all the time, in your universe all the time, I highly recommend getting a uh, book of ideas. Write down all your ideas, ask the ideas to tell you when to actualize them because they have a sense of their own timing because they are their own conscious creations. And then play with these three things. If you write something down and then maybe you look at it three months later, six months later, and you're like, oh, you know what? This doesn't actually match what I would like to have in the world or what I'd like to create in the world or this actually doesn't expand my life. You can, you can let go of that creation so that you're not um, maintaining an energetic feeding to things, to the creations, to the ideas that aren't even for you. You might be aware of other people's creations and you can let them go. You don't have to be a creation hoarder. You have lots of them. <laughs> let them go. And you can ask what contribution I can be, which is different than an energetic feeding. So contribution is gifting and receiving at the same time. And I gift, I am in contribution with so many creations. And you know what? Probably 95% of the people leading those creations have no idea I'm even contributing. Um, but I do it from the space of that it, it gifts to me to gift to that actualizing in the world. Because I just would like a greater world. I don't really care. Um how it shows up, I just would like it to show up. So I'm willing to contribute to anything that's going to actualize that greater world that I'm here to be a part of. So, and that includes ideas. So if I have ideas coming, they might be brilliant fucking ideas, but if I don't get a sense that it matches the world that I'm here to create, and I don't have this, the energy for it, not that I'm finite in my energy, but I have so much else that can use my attention, my nurturing, and my um, my energetic feeding, right? So pull out all your energy from everywhere you're energetically feeding all the ideas that aren't even here for you, or that you don't, you're not actually willing to commit to because they don't match you. They don't resonate with you. Maybe they're not big enough for you, so you're not willing to commit to them. And I mean, if they're not big, big enough for you. They can't even, those ideas can't even commit to you. So you can have fun with it, play with the idea a little bit, and then let it go. And then let it go. But these other ideas that do match, that you're getting, yes, and this is going to expand my life to be one of or the creative source for. And then ask that question, do I, does this creation require more people or energies to facilitate its actualization? And if, if you get yes on that, then just ask, okay, cool, show me. And you might just find randomly, you, you start having a conversation with someone about this idea and you wouldn't even think that they'd be interested. And then all these, as if by magic, wonderful things fall into place that allow it to 
come into the world. My, I, I have the point of view that creations come to us either from we're just aware, like I said, we're aware of other people's creations and possibilities. But if something actually comes to me, often it's because it's aware that I can, no matter how huge it is from my point of view, no matter how much I'm like, oh my God, this is bigger than anything I've ever chosen before. It's coming to me because it knows that I have the capacity to facilitate its actualization. Would you be willing to acknowledge that about you? Those wildest, biggest, most glorious dreams, ideas, creations that you've had, even if they're so outside of the box that half the people you know would think you're crazy for even considering them. What if they... Right, what if you could look at it as an acknowledgement of your capacities that these ideas even presented themselves to you? And again, you always have choice because sometimes it's not for this lifetime. Sometimes it's not for now. And you can write it in that book and check in later. I hope this was a contribution. I talked really fast and had a lot of info on this one. So you might need to re-listen to it. Um, but I'm grateful for you. And if you, I would be even more grateful if you'd be willing to uh, like the video. If you liked it, leave a comment below. I've been really enjoying the comments. There's some interesting ones, I got to tell you. Um, and uh, please share this with someone that you get might uh, receive something from this. Thank you again. We'll see you in the next one.